Hi, so welcome to our last episode of Baking with Pam. And again, I'm Pam and this is my kitchen. And we have been making recipes from this cookbook called Bake It, which is available at your library. So we have done butter cookies, shortbread triangles, gingerbread cookies, and now we are going to try our hand at making cinnamon rolls because who doesn't love fresh cinnamon rolls in the morning? Cinnamon rolls are going to be, I think, our most challenging recipe and the one that's going to have the longest time um, because when you make the dough it's going to have to proof and that means the dough is going to have to rise and it's going to be proofing for about two hours and then it's going to have to proof again once you make the rolls itself before you bake them. All right, so what are we going to need for this recipe? We're going to need some milk and yeast, butter, sugar, white sugar, and then we're going to need some brown sugar, some right here. We're going to need flour, salt, cinnamon, and then eggs. Now, as far as our equipment's going to go, it's the usual equipment of a bowl, some mixing utensils, some measuring cups, but in addition, you're going to need a pan to, or a pot to cook over the stove because we are going to be warming up our milk and butter and yeast to get that started. And then we're also going to need a spring form pan. And so if you remembered when I made the shortbread triangles, that was a spring form, spring form pan to which the pan detaches from the bottom. So the bottom comes loose from the pan itself. All right, so wish me luck and let's get started. To get the first part of this recipe going, and that is to get the yeast activated. So it's going to be our milk, and water, yeast, and a little bit of sugar, and our butter, and we are going to cook that part over the stove. So I just mixed together the yeast, water, butter, milk, and some sugar, and it's going to rest for about 10 minutes. This is resting. I'm going to get started mixing the flours together. minutes I mix together the flour and then the other little ingredients and I also again made a well in the in the center of the bowl again it's uh, you just make a hole into the center and I'm going to pour the yeast mixture into this mix it up and then get started on whisking the eggs To have it all mixed together you're going to end up kneading it for about 10 minutes on a floured surface. Now this dough is a bit sticky and they recommend if it's sticky just continue add a little bit more flour to it so it doesn't like glop on your hands like it is right mine right now.
Okay, once you got your dough, once you've got your dough kneaded, uh, you're going to take a bowl and grease it, and then you're going to put your dough into there, cover it. One can tell me what I've done wrong, so why is my dough always so sticky and it's just covered on my hands? Great, I would love to use the tidbits and information, and I'm assuming anybody else who runs into that same problem would probably love some tips also. <laughs> And now we wait two hours. I'll see you guys in two hours. It's been two hours and my dough hopefully is ready to use. It doesn't look like it's risen so much, so I must have somewhere goofed with uh, mixing the yeast or there's some other situations going on. Who knows? Um, but so we are going to go ahead and make the filling and then we're going to roll out the dough. So the filling is simple. It's just basically cinnamon and brown sugar. And then we are also going to need some butter melted to brush the dough first before you sprinkle on the cinnamon and sugar for it to stick. And then you're going to use an egg for um, like an egg wash. All right, let's get started. We're going to roll it into a rectangle, so about 16 by 12 inches. Butter, you are going to melt it. It's really hot, my bowl. Uh, so I just got done melting it in the microwave. And you're, you're just going to brush it onto your dough. And then once you brush it onto your dough, you're going to leave probably about, what would they say? Um, a half of an inch of a border around your dough. So everything, all your filling will be inside that border. Back and read the directions again and it's a good thing because I was wrong with the border you are supposed to only leave a half inch of border on one side of the square okay so now I'm going to take an egg I'm going to uh, lightly beat it and then I'm going to brush the one side of my dough for the tricky part. I have a feeling my dough is going to be sticking to this countertop because that has been my luck today. And so yeah, wish me luck. Um, once you have it roll up, you're going to lightly roll it so it's not like super tight. Just roll it. And then you're going to cut it into 12 rolls and then put it into your greased spring form pan. All right, wish me luck guys. right <laughs> my dough was sticking to the countertop so it wasn't the greatest of rolling it but it worked I guess um, <laughs> they look a little uh, sad 
cut up. It's not as nice for the picture, but like I said, I'm an amateur. All right, so they are all in here, my mold of cinnamon rolls. So what am I going to do is just cover it again and then let it sit and proof for rising for about an hour or two and hopefully they will look much more risen than my first dough. So we'll see. Cinnamon rolls have been proofing again for another two hours and Mine didn't rise the greatest, but I kind of knew it wasn't going to considering it didn't rise the first time. So before you put an oven, you are going to take some of that egg again and you're just going to wash it or brush it onto the tops of these and it makes a nice kind of a golden color when it comes in the oven. So once you have that, you're going to cook it for about 20 to 30 minutes and at 350 degrees. So I just took our gooey cinnamon rolls out of the oven. Super boiling right now. And I'm going to sprinkle on a little sugar on top of it and then put it onto the wild rack to cool. All right, the moment of truth. We are going to take it out of the pan and see how this goes. Like I said before, it's underproved, so it looks slightly underdone. But hopefully, it tastes good and it should have cooked long enough, so I'm not too worried about it being bad. Moment of truth. <laughs> Could you still work? you live and learn so I'll know for next time to activate the yeast a little better and then maybe cook it a little longer I'm not sure all right well thanks for joining just thank you for joining me in the kitchen as I made my way through some of the recipes of bake it so remember to pick up a copy at the library and challenge yourself this December to make some nice holiday treats. Thanks guys.